episode of this thing that I do every Sunday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Right off the bat, I want to give a shout out to all the fans who have paid for this podcast. Okay, you guys are the real MVPs. Thanks to you, the podcast is now paying for itself, and it wouldn't be possible without you. So I'm really grateful for that. So keep doing that, so I can keep doing this. Right? For more information, please read the description uh, in this video. Speaking of which. I was not going to drop an episode today, right? Here's what happened. Uh, I was supposed to talk about mental health in this episode, but on Tuesday, my mind just switched off. Okay, I think this whole situation just got to me, and I felt like I needed some time off, so I decided not to work, and I downloaded Scrabble and Candy Crush instead. But by the time I got to Friday, uh, I was feeling much better, so I decided to record anyway. So it's Friday where I am right now, and it's Sunday where you are. um i will do the episode on mental health maybe next week uh, but today i'll try and keep it a little light after last week's episode somebody asked me about the pictures on my wall okay and if i could talk about what they are uh, so let me give you the grand tour these are all pictures that i have taken uh, during my travels on my OnePlus 7 Pro phone which is also what i'm using to record this podcast right uh, this was uh, in berlin a uh, lot of graffiti all over the city this was taken very close to where i was staying uh, this was uh, koh samui amsterdam this was a music festival in germany koh samui again barcelona these were taken on my birthday this is where we uh, we were staying at this beautiful resort called uh, forest hills uh, in a place called tala this is uh, me and the lady uh, having an important and serious discussion about gst uh that's ko samui again on the way to kofangan and this one was uh, a spot at uh, one of these canals in amsterdam where my friend harry and i were having a very interesting visual experience so yeah so what i do is i i travel a lot and i take a lot of pictures and the ones that i really like go up on the walls uh, around my apartment so if you ever become my friend one day i might invite you over and you will get to see the rest of them All right, so let's talk about what I did this week. Okay, I shaved, as you can probably see, but this time I used a razor, which is why I look like such a champu. I usually use uh, an electric shaver, but the one I have uh, got busted, uh, so I can't get a new one till this lockdown is lifted. So I stepped out and and bought a razor. So now every time I shave, it's a clean shave. And when it comes to shaving, it's a very special journey for men. Right, like when I was a child. I would watch my dad shave and I would be like yeah I'm going to do that one day. And this one time my folks were out of town and I tried shaving and I cut myself and I was like I am never doing that again. I will just grow out my beard as long as it has to and I will change my name to Moses. And as a teenager I started to grow facial hair but my mustache would never connect with the rest of my beard to this day, right? And that's when I realized that I will never truly be a hipster. Like very few things in life can break a man's confidence like his inability to grow a beard it's like you meet someone and you know that they will be perfect for you but then they are just like nah i don't want this but they'll still hang around like you can see them it it's a very painful thing you know so because of that i had to start shaving regularly which i did and then i found out that other people are willing to do this for you like they're willing to shave you in exchange for money and a little bit of touching So I so I started going to the barber shop and I would let them shave me and it was it's a nice relaxing process you know my favorite part of the shave would be the end okay when he would say sir massage chahiye and I would be like yeah baby and then he would start uh, with his hands you know just keep rubbing your head put some oil or whatever and then at some point he would pull out this machine that I've never seen anywhere else okay it's a thing that fits around the barber's hand and when he switches it on it vibrates and then he rubs his hand all over your head and if you're a guy who's done this before you will know that my favorite part which is also your favorite part is that moment where he puts his finger inside your ear as that thing is vibrating and holy shit that feels so good like i i don't know how to explain it it's like you know how when you have an itch that you can't reach so you ask somebody else to scratch it but the time spent between asking that person and them actually finding the spot to scratch it creates this tension 
and by the time they get to that spot that tension is released and and it feels so good that's exactly what this massage feels like okay it's like the tension is being released and created at the same time okay but there's also um uh, a trick to enjoying this massage okay you have to be very cool about it okay like you have to be like yeah yeah this feels good this this is nice yeah 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 like don't make the mistake of making your cum face okay like don't just go oh oh Oh, oh yeah that 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 just makes you look really disgusting like don't you don't want to creep the bab out okay he's 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 like he's a nice guy who likes putting his finger in your ear but after getting this massage uh, a few times uh, i think i have a theory okay i think the inside of a man's ear is his g spot so ladies i'm i'm not even kidding okay if you want to make your man happy get yourself one of those machines okay strap it onto your hand switch it on and then put your finger in his ear right like you can make him do anything after that okay so let me get down to what i wanted to discuss on this episode all right so uh, i follow this page called uh, humans of bombay i think you guys followed as well it's inspired by uh, humans of new york and what they do is they post stories about you know everyday people doing very extraordinary things and every time you read a story you feel really inspired and it gives you a different perspective on life and can and sometimes they they they, they even shake you up you know like this uh, i think last month they posted a six part story about uh, this lady who as a child had to flee brussels uh, during world war 2 and then she eventually made her way to india Uh, and there was also another story about this girl from a small town who had to overcome many obstacles to become a lawyer and then one of the first cases she took up was the nirbhaya case where she fought on behalf of the parents to make sure that the convicted uh, rapists were were executed so very intense stories that uh, you know like i said shake you up uh, and then a couple of days ago i came across this story uh, on their page and i'm going to read it as is okay heads up our story is as millennial as it gets we met on instagram when i came across anirudh's profile i loved his feed it was so aesthetic so after i stalked the hell out of him i messaged him or slid into his dms if you will he replied with a hi instantly and we began chatting I'd never met him but within an hour of texting it felt like we'd known each other since forever. Before we knew it we couldn't get through a day without talking to each other. He was studying in Canada and I was in India so the time difference was tough but we found a way to talk. Sleep could wait. Also we are both content creators so when Anirudh suggested we do a TikTok duet video I was game. We had so much fun but more than that we realized how much we felt for each other. So he asked me out on a virtual date where we dressed up, ordered the same food and video called each other to make it feel like real life. It was so romantic. How did he manage to sweep me off my feet from thousands of miles away? That night, I told him I loved him and he did too. But we hadn't even met so there was that fear of things going flat when we met in person. So 3 months after our virtual romance, he made a trip to Pune to see me and give things a real shot. For a month I showed him around took him to my favorite spots and spent all my time with him but if I'm being honest I knew he had my heart the second I saw him so we became official and told our family and friends but he had to go back to Canada to finish his last month I missed him so much as the long distance resumed it was also tough because Anirudh could choose to stay there after graduation but then he told me he was coming back I was on cloud 9 He said his heart belongs with me in India. Later, we both moved to Bombay together and got two different flats in the same building. Finally, from being a thousand miles away, we're now just a floor apart. Virtual dates have turned into breakfast in bed, and Skype sessions are now fairy lit Netflix nights at home. But he still finds a way to sweep me off my feet. Just recently, he gave up a huge work opportunity to stand by my side as I won an award for iconic influencer of the year. We're only a year old but somehow time isn't a measure. It feels like a love of a lifetime with him. So I guess that's our story. A modern day love with an old school heart. So, people read this 
post and they commented and a lot of people commented saying this is such a fairy tale romance and you knew straight away that they were in their 20s because people in their 30s read this and they were like this is such a crock of shit now by the time you get to your 30s you understand fully well that the road to a relationship is full of potholes okay like relationships today are so bumpy i feel the bmc is maintaining them and after reading this i had two questions okay first of all what is this story doing here on a page like humans of bombay like they just went from world war 2 death sentence to rapists to tiktok romance and the second question i have is is this the definitive millennial romance like is this your romeo and juliet and the story is very millennial but uh, parts of it i feel uh, are very unrealistic okay and i worry about the youth of this country so if i may allow me to do a little examination of this perfect romance firstly let me tell you something okay if something sounds too good to be true it 100% is so don't fall for it okay like don't read something like this and then expect the same shit to happen to you because it won't let's look at the story piece by piece okay when i came across anirudh's profile i loved his feed it was so aesthetic so i stalked the hell out of him okay this is something all of us do okay you've done it i have also done it you call it stalking i call it due diligence I feel it's fair okay if if somebody has their profile that's out there it's public and you like them there's no harm in checking them out but there are a few ways to do this okay make sure you check out different camera angles don't just do like one camera angle make sure if it's just close ups there's that that's a red flag you need to see close ups long shots uh, uh, as well okay so make sure you get all the angles covered before you decide that you like this person and then she said she slid into his dms i like that term slide into dms like it's like you know you don't just message someone you slide into their dms okay and today a lot of romances begin in dms and i, I think and i think that's really cool because one day you'll have kids and they'll just ask you like mom like how did you and dad meet and you'll be like yeah i just slid into his dms this one time and it was love at first chat you know and it's crazy how today if you like someone you can just slide into their dms and send them a message okay when i was younger and i liked a girl and if i wanted to send her a message i had to write that message on a piece of paper tear it off my notebook and then throw it at her okay and if you had bad aim you would end up dating a girl you don't even like i actually feel bad for all the young boys out there who are reading this and are now refreshing their inbox waiting for like a message from a hot girl and like that's not going to happen hey like guys let me tell you okay hot girls only dm certain kinds of men okay they are like they they, they like men who do things okay like like musicians actors sportsmen comedians like talent i think is an aphrodisiac and if you are not talented then please make sure you are interesting so that when she does stalk your profile there's enough material in there for her to actually write you a message but here's the thing okay the dm experience for men and women is extremely different then they're, they're not the same okay i think like as guys we have a more positive experience women not so much when women uh, slide into our dms they're more subtle they they're, they're very cute about it you know they they like they just probably be like an emoji and, and something very polite but when a guy most often they're not slides into a woman's dms they're very direct okay they are very like here's a picture of my dick i have one it works and guys i don't know what you're expecting when you send a girl a picture of your penis okay like she's never going to look at that picture and go oh my god this is just the shape size and color i was looking for it's never going to happen also there's a reason why your penis is located where it is and not on your face okay that's because it's meant to make very few public appearances a penis 
is like that shy cousin you had as a child remember when like you would go to his place like you would meet the rest of his family but he wouldn't come out of his room like you knew he was there but you couldn't see him like that's how you should treat your penis okay like treat him like your shy cousin and and if you like a girl uh, don't message her and go hey i like you here's a picture of my cousin no wait for the girl to get to know you okay talk to her for a bit and if she likes you uh, and then if she wants to meet your cousin that's when you make the introduction okay moving on uh so he asked me out on a virtual date where we dressed up ordered the same food and video called each other to make it feel like real life it was so romantic here's how i know this story is bullshit okay what did he order in canada that you ordered in pune ha huh? what up missal also what kind of a date is it when you are having dinner and he is having breakfast so 3 months after our virtual romance he made a trip to pune to see me and give things a real shot for a month i showed him around took him to my favorite spots and spent all my time with him But if I'm being honest, I knew he had my heart the second I saw him. Yeah, right. Do you know how many times I've seen a girl and she had my heart the minute I saw her but she didn't even look at me? Yeah. Doesn't happen. So we became official and told our family and friends, but he had to go back to Canada to finish his last month. I missed him so much as the long distance resumed. It was also tough because Anirudh could choose to stay there after graduation, but then he told me he was coming back. I was on cloud nine. He said his heart belongs with me in India. Okay, wait. You had a chance to live in Canada, and you chose to move back to India. You gave up the chance to live in a country that has Justin Trudeau as prime minister to come to a country that has. Never mind. Never mind. Like even Akshay Kumar is like, bro, kya kar raha hai? Yar, pehle citizenship le, fir wapas aana. Anyway, so then they moved to Bombay together and got two different flats in the same building. So let me get this straight. You knew you loved him before you met him, and then you met him, and you knew he he had your heart straight away. He then gave up an opportunity to live in Canada to be with you. and then you guys got two different apartments in the same building that is such a cop out okay listen you guys did a tiktok duet i don't know what the fuck that means but that sounds like commitment right there okay if you wanted separate apartments you should have gotten them in different locations because when you guys break up and you will who's going to move out Yeah, like, do you know how hard it is to find an apartment in Bombay? Like, both of you are going to be so stubborn; you are not going to move out. And then, you know what's going to happen? Awkward elevator rides, season one, episode six. And finally, just recently, he gave up a huge work opportunity to stand by my side as I won an award for iconic influencer of the year. Okay, I assume that they are both influencers. So when he gave up a huge work opportunity to stand by her side, I think they meant that he gave up a one-off gig to be with her. And this is very common with self-employed people. Okay, like even with me, there have been times in my previous relationships where I would have had something planned with my girlfriend, and then a big gig would come up, and on the same day, uh, and then I would do the right thing and choose the gig over my then girlfriend. You know. and today she is not in my life anymore but that money is helping me deal with this pandemic okay so always choose your career over love also iconic influencer of the year really like you know that's bullshit okay everybody knows that you're not really an iconic influencer unless you can get 1.3 billion people to do this So here's my verdict on this love story okay I think it was a PR stunt so well done to both of them uh, and to TikTok and here's why I'm saying this okay it's because a genuine love story one that's for the ages is defined by its conflict and how both partners overcome this conflict to be together and it's kind of hard to say that for this particular love story because their biggest conflict appears to be bad Wi-Fi And with that we come to the end of this episode I hope you enjoyed it please hit like 
uh, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that i will be back with a new episode next sunday till then stay safe uh, be good and slide into people's dms respectfully this is daniel fernandez signing out take care goodbye